Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 2nd, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. The weather today was overcast with light to moderate east-southeast winds, and there was a brighter period from around 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. That is when the majority of the flight occurred, and then the count ended early as a wintry mix moved in. We had some nice looks at this species today. Here we have a small ASIP. We see a relatively small head with a bug-eyed appearance because it's a large eyeball on a small head. We see that the dark cap extends all the way across the back of the neck, and we see a very squared off tip to the tail because all of the tail feathers are the same length. This is a sharp-shinned hawk, and the orange barring tells us that is an adult. During that brighter period, we had a nice flight of low turkey vultures giving us excellent looks, and we had about 200 total. Here we have two high raptors soaring together, and we probably never would have seen the small one if it wasn't with the bigger one. The bigger one on the right has a white head and white tail and is otherwise dark. This is, of course, an adult bald eagle. And if we look at the smaller raptor, we see that it has very pointed wings and is light underneath. So a light falcon is an American kestrel, and I think it's probably a male. It looks like we can see those orange feathers to the tail. There was enough lift to get at least a few buteos moving. Here we have one that has a belly band and dark patagial bars. This is an adult red-tailed hawk. Here's another ASIP that gave us a nice look, and this one could be a little bit difficult, but I have this one pegged as a sharp-shinned hawk, probably a larger female. Here's another raptor that gave us a really nice look as it cruised through low. We see a grayish head and yellow eyes. Overall, otherwise, it's pretty white underneath with some dark to the wingtips and the trailing edge of the secondaries. This is an adult male northern harrier. Here we have a large bulky buteo. We see a belly band and we see some faint patagial bars. This is another red-tailed hawk, but on this one we don't see that bold dark trailing edge to the wings and it's more of a brownish banded tail because this is a juvenile. Here we have the top side of a soaring buteo, and perhaps the most distinctive field mark are the pale crescents near the wingtips, which make this a red-shouldered hawk. Here we have another ASIP. This one's like a big flying cross. We see a more lanky shape overall, a larger head, a longer tail, and the tip of the tail looks a little bit rounded from shorter outer tail feathers. This is an adult Cooper's hawk. Here we have an eagle high overhead, and we see a very small head, especially compared to the length of the tail and we see some gold to the back of the neck. This is a golden eagle, and this is a subadult bird. We see it doesn't have any white in the wings, but we do see some white to the base of the tail. And this bird I spotted way out in front, and then it ended up coming right overhead, and it actually lingered for long enough for me to get a nice cell phone video of it and for all of us to study it and photograph it very well. So a very cooperative golden eagle. Here we have a blue and white water bird with a long pointed bill. This is a belted kingfisher. Here's the bird of the day. This swallow caught my eye as it was flying out over the lake because I could tell it wasn't either of the two swallow species we've had so far, which are tree swallow and barn swallow. This swallow we see is blue on top, but it has some red to the face and a dark throat. And also perhaps most distinctively, it has a white forehead and an orange rump. This is a cliff swallow. Cliff swallow isn't rare here, but it's a few weeks early. So it's a nice find for early April. And now if you already feel attached to this cute little guy, please look away for the next photo because I don't want you to be as traumatized as we were. As we were watching the cliff swallow, the only Merlin of the day cruised through and grabbed it out of midair and kept going with it. So RIP little buddy. Sorry it had to end this way, but you're still our bird of the day. Here we have another falcon that was much better behaved. On this one, we see it's light colored underneath. This is an American kestrel. And from the spotting to the breast, we know that it's a male. Taking a look at the top side of the same kestrel, we see that distinctive male plumage with the orange back and tail and the blue and black wings. The count ended early due to mixed precipitation moving in, including a little bit of snow and some ice pellets. So not good conditions for raptors to be migrating. Dave Wheeler texted me to tell me that on his drive home, as he passed the South Lookout, he had some Vesper Sparrows, so Kim and I ran over there and got to see them, at least two Vesper Sparrows. If you're not familiar with identifying Vesper Sparrows, they're one of the stripy sparrows, and perhaps the most distinctive thing about them is that they have a white eye ring. In total today, I had 56 species. Two species were new for the season. Those were Cliff Swallow and Vesper Sparrow, bringing us to a total of 104 species for the season.
Taking a look at the hockey count report for our migrating raptor totals, today we had 198 turkey vultures, 2 ospreys, 2 bald eagles, 3 northern harriers, 15 sharp-shinned hawks, and 2 cooper's hawks. For beautios, we had 2 red-shouldered hawks and 10 red-tailed hawks. We had 1 golden eagle. And for falcons, we had 3 American kestrels and 1 merlin for a total of 239 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 742 and the season total to 19,045. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, they're calling for rain ending early in the morning and then a mix of sun and clouds for the afternoon. Much warmer with a high in the mid 60s and winds south shifting west at 15 to 25 miles per hour. So it will be good winds for pretty much the whole day, especially early when the winds are more southerly. As the winds get more southwesterly, sometimes that pushes the raptor line more out over the lake, and the wind is going to be fairly strong tomorrow, which can bat us around a little bit and make observing difficult. But overall, it's looking like a pretty good day. My one concern might be how much rain we end up getting. Uh, Obviously, that can hold back the flight a little bit, but they seem to keep taking some rain out of the forecast every time I check. So It's hard to know sometimes. I really checked a bunch of different websites and tried to see what the overall weather pattern will be for the day. But overall, things are looking good, so I would expect a pretty good flight for tomorrow. If we take a look at the weather map for tomorrow morning, we're somewhere over here along the southeast corner of the lake. You can see the warm front will be passing at some point throughout the morning. And then this gap here, what we call the warm wedge between the warm front and the cold front, that's when we usually get the big raptor flight. If we get one, that's when we have the good favorable winds ahead of the cold front pushing through. And there's actually sort of a double cold front here. So I'm not really sure what's going to happen with that. But in any case, the system is setting up correctly where the low is going to be off to the north. So we get the warm front cold front combo. So overall, things are looking pretty good for tomorrow as long as the rain doesn't hold back the flight too much. Looking ahead to Friday, it's looking partly cloudy with a high in the mid 40s and west northwest winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll probably be at the south lookout and I would expect a steady turkey vulture flight and light to moderate migration of other species. And then for Saturday, it's looking windy with rain likely a high up around 50 and southeast winds at 20 to 30 miles per hour so it's a good wind direction very strong but i think the main problem for saturday is just going to be the rain so we'll keep an eye on that as we get closer but it's looking like it could be a washout for saturday all right well we had high hopes for today and we ended up really only getting a flight for about two hours so sorry for everyone who came out earlier and had to wait a few hours for anything to really get going and it ended up feeling really cold as we were sitting out there in the wind today as well so not a very fun day to be out but hopefully tomorrow with the warmer temperatures and the southerly winds at least it'll be an interesting day if nothing else i think with those southerly winds there's certainly the possibility of a big raptor flight but still a little bit of a question mark in terms of what exactly will the weather do how much rain are we going to get and when are these fronts going to hit but the overall timing of the weather pattern seems okay for us so we'll cross our fingers and The only way to know is to be out there tomorrow, so I guess we'll find out. Hope to see you soon out at Derby Hill. From Lycobirds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.